Hey friends, welcome back to the Godspeed Garage. Today we're continuing our series on things you never want to mess with on your vehicle. Now just a real quick backstory, if you haven't seen any of my other videos on this truck, this truck is sitting on the chassis of a 1975 C10 Chevy pickup. 1975 was a long time ago, and a lot of these parts are far past their service life and need to be either replaced or repaired. I've noticed a little bit of slop in my wheel when you're going down the highway. It's kind of nice to be able to have some response out of your steering wheel and not go like this and do nothing. So the first thing we gotta do is you wanna make sure your steering wheel and everything is straight. So you're gonna back way up, drive into your parking spot, try to keep your steering wheel straight, make sure you're going in a straight line. That'll just make it easier to find your baseline. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you take a marker pen and mark all your linkages if you're gonna take any of these apart. And then the next thing we gotta do is make sure that the steering box is actually the problem. Sometimes it can be something in your steering linkage. So you're gonna wanna crawl into your vehicle, grab a hold of all your steering linkage bars and kind of wiggle them, twist them, check to make sure that pitman arm isn't loose, any of these ball joints are not loose. If you can move them by hand, they're pretty loose and probably need to be replaced. I replaced mine with these Moog ball joints. It wasn't too long ago and these are still pretty good. I can't move them by hand. So I know there's no problem in my steering linkage and now I can go to the steering gear box. Now there's a right way and a wrong way to adjust just these boxes. The one that a lot of people go to first is kind of probably the most obvious if you just look at it. There's a set screw, Allen screw, yours might be a Torx screw. That one tends to be the one that most people go to first. However, this is your over center adjustment and you don't really want to mess with that. If your alignment is correct, your caster is correct, your car does want to go back to center when you're driving down the road. If you tighten this screw too much, when you turn the wheel, it's gonna stay that way. Now, according to the service manual, this only gets about six to 10 inch pounds of resistance on it, which is not very much. So you really don't wanna tighten this one down too much. The adjustment you're more than likely gonna be making is on your input shaft. Now, if you wanna do it according to the service manual, here's how you do it. You're gonna need to remove all of your fluid, so it's probably best to take this off your vehicle and put it on a bench. And then you're gonna to wanna to loosen this lock nut so you can loosen that pitman arm adjuster to get it off weighted. If you're trying to get it right back to where it was, count your turns, make a mark, try to keep track of where it is and you can get pretty close. Next, you wanna loosen this giant nut and you can use a giant socket if you've got one or you can just use a punch. Once you got that retainer nut loose, now you can take a spanner wrench and you see these two dimples here, you can tighten this one down. You're looking for 30 foot pounds of torque. So you're gonna wanna be able to get a torque wrench on there, which probably requires a special tool or you can make one. Once you get that down to 30 foot pounds, you're gonna make a mark on the top of the case and you're gonna back it off a half an inch and then cinch down that lock nut again. And once you get that locked down, you're gonna need to retighten your Pitman arm adjuster. Again, this only gets six to 10 inch pounds of resistance. So to get within that range, you're gonna to wanna to put a socket over your input shaft, just big enough to be able to grip it without slipping. Attach your torque wrench and then spin this to get within that range. Once you feel like you've got it, you can tighten down that lock nut to 20 inch pounds. Then you're gonna to wanna to hook it all up again, go for a test drive, make sure it does return to center and see if the slop is gone. So that's according to the service manual. I'm gonna show you a much easier way to do this. Again, if yours is old like mine and you're just trying to get rid of a little bit of that slop, here's really all you need to do. Just loosen that lock nut with your punch and then you're just gonna take your punch and put it in one of those dimples and just kind of tap on it and get that thing to turn a little bit until it feels like there's no more slop in your input shaft. It wouldn't take very much. You just gotta kind of cinch that down because sometimes those worm gears get a little worn out. You don't want to over tighten it because you don't want it to be too stiff. That's going to cause a lot more problems with your power steering pump. So you want to just tighten enough to where there's no slop in there. Once you're sure you got it, then you're pretty much done. You just got to clean up and boom, bada, boom, Bob's your uncle. There you go. And then you just reinstall everything and we'll go for a test drive. Well, I mean, I didn't make it any worse, so that's good, right? 
It's definitely a little bit more responsive, a little bit tighter, but with this many miles on it, I think this is just gonna buy you some time at best. Probably the better way is to get yourself a rebuild kit and rebuild the one you got or trade yours in and get a remanufactured one. But you know, I think I have a better solution for this. It's gonna have to wait till the next episode though. So make sure you subscribe to follow along with that. If you like this, if it helped you out, hit that like button, it really does help me out. If you didn't like it, hit that like button three times to really not like it. Get yourself a t-shirt over here. Check out the social medias down here and I'll see you on the next one.